Hello, and if you're looking for the PMP certification or a CAPM, or you just want to learn, uh, to learn a little bit more about project management and the PM Block Guide, this is the video that is going to help you in understanding the process groups and also the knowledge areas we have in the PM Block Guide. And in another video, I'm going to explain each of the 49 processes we have in the PM Block Guide 6th edition. You can also find interesting videos here about the new 7th edition that is coming up soon. Also about Prince 2, Agile methods and everything that you need to know to become a great project manager. Because one of the things that I learned in my last 15 years managing projects and implementing PMOs is that the more we learn about different methodologies, we have a bigger toolbox. We understand better different project approaches, understand the context, the environment, and this is very important for you. So let's go, let's get started. Let's start with the processes groups right now. So one of the things we know about the processes groups is that we have five processes groups in the PM Block Guide, and this is part of the standard. We have the initiating, initiating a project, and what happens here? We have the formal authorization of a project or a phase. You have the project charter, you identify the stakeholders, and this is the beginning of a project. And a project should, should always start with a formal beginning. Once we do the initiating, then we have the planning. So the planning process group is where we combine the knowledge areas so that we can plan scope, plan time, plan schedule or time, plan resources, plan costs, plan quality, and all of that. To develop a project management plan, we have to focus on all the knowledge areas. So for example, knowledge areas here, we have scope, time, cost, quality, all of those that I'm going to describe in another video, step by step, going through each of the processes. But when you're doing the planning, and this is very important, you are detailing how you're going to achieve the goals or the objectives you established in the beginning. So in the initiating group that I just explained, what we have here usually is the project charter. You also can identify stakeholders, as I mentioned. You may build a business case, feasibility studies, or anything that would be pre-project activities or during the initiation. Because we never start a project, right, without proper understanding. So you did your diligence, you did the studies, you identify the specific opportunity or problem you want to solve. And in the project charter, we are going to have the project objective, the main goals. Probably you are going to have a justification, you are going to have a high level description or preliminary scope. That means in the project charter, we have our vision, future state. Once we complete the project, then we are going to achieve what is established in the project charter. And what do we do in the planning? So in the planning, we build a detailed plan we describe how we are going to achieve the objectives. So here we set the destination, here we create action plans, we create the route, the map, the roadmap, so that we can achieve this future state. And as you can imagine, the planning can take lots of time. We need to gather requirements, we need to define activities, sequence activities, plan for risks, resources, and all of that. And as we are doing the planning, then we can go to the execution. So sometimes we do all the planning, front-end loading, we do all the planning, and then after the plan is complete, we go for the execution. Usually what happens is that we're building the plan in what we call roll-waving planning. Rolling-waving planning. This means we are planning and then we execute, we plan the next phase, we plan the next step, so then we execute the next step. So as you can imagine, this is an iterative process where we plan, we execute, we plan the next stage, we execute, we also get the feedback from the execution. And once we complete everything, then we have the closing. So closing 
is where we complete the project, we have the final acceptance, transition, we have all the information, uh, final report, uh, training, warranty period, whatever you have in the end. So it is important that we focus here on the plan, as I mentioned, and here in the execution we do a process that is named direct and manage a project. So you are going to work with your project team, with the stakeholders, you are going to manage resources, you are going to execute and provide oversight to the tasks, and also you are going to have this planning uh, feedback here. And the, so the first process group, initiating authorization approval. Second process group, planning, we create a detailed plan, maybe different plans, and we define how we are going to execute the project. In the execution, the third process group, we do the work, we get the job done. And we also have a fourth process group, which is monitoring and controlling. Monitoring and controlling. And the monitoring and controlling is monitoring not only the execution, but also the planning, the initiation, the closing, so that we have uh, configura configuration management, for example, we manage changes, we manage documents, we manage all the aspects. Not only from a performance point of view, if the project is behind schedule, ahead schedule, spending more, spending less, but also managing change. Every time we have change, we need a change management process called integrated change management or integrated change control, where we identify the impact for the change, then we go through a process for approval. If approved, we update the plan and then we execute. And in the end, as I mentioned to you, so here we do the work and in the end we have final acceptance, we have closing, and anything else that is related here. So one of the big aspects here is that some people believe the processes groups are phases and this is wrong. So take note on this, process groups is different from phases. Phases means the project life cycle and we may have any kind of project life cycle. So, for example, when we think about project life cycle, imagine we have an IT project, for example, and then I'm going to have a design phase, I'm going to have a prototype phase or a build phase, and then I'm going to have a test phase, and finally the closing phase or acceptance phase, okay? So you can have as many phases as you want. This is the life cycle. And it really depends on best practices for your industry. When we think about construction, you have different phases, IT, other phases. Probably your organization establish the phases you need. And the processes groups that I just described, they happen at the project level. So you initiate the project, you plan the project, you execute the project, you monitor and control, and you close the project in the end. But these processes groups, they also happen at the phase level. So we do a project charter here. So project charter. We have a project plan here, project management plan, for example high level, macro planning, and then in the execution for every different phase, we initiate the phase, we plan the phase in detail, we execute this phase in detail, monitor and control the phase, then we close the phase. And here we have a stage gate. So when you complete a, a specific phase, we have a stage gate, shall we continue or not? Then you do the planning for the next change, for the next phase, initiate the next phase, plan, execute, monitor and control, then you close the phase, stage gate, and so on. So it's very important that you review this video, this explanation, because many people uh, have this, uh, uh, this wrong idea that the processes groups initiate, plan, execute, these are phases and they are not phases. 
the processes groups, they group processes, similar processes, so that we can do this at the same point in time. But you can do this repeatedly inside every different phase you have. So we initiate the project again, project charter, you do macro plan, project management plan, then you execute, and for each and every phase you should do the same. You initiate the phase, plan the phase in detail, execute, close the phase, stage gate, approve the next stage, approve the next phase, then you initiate the next phase, plan, execute, and so on. This is a very important concept. Most of the people get this wrong and then they believe they have to do all the initiating, all the planning and until they have all the planning completed, they do not execute anything. So you can do what I just described as rolling wave planning. So you can plan, plan in waves, rolling wave planning, you can plan in waves. And you just have to be careful that you understand the project management plan should be integrated, coherent, cohesion. You have to pay attention that the macro plan, you do not mess up with the macro plan because what we're doing in the phases is that we are adding more detail. So probably give you another example. You are going to create this high level planning then you create a high-level WBS. I'm going to describe a WBS in another video in case you don't know what is this. You at least have the phases and the most important deliverables. You may create a high-level schedule and you do not have all the information. Once you are executing the phase, then you add more detail to that phase. You add more tasks more detail, more deliverables, more work packages, so that you have a more granular work defined inside a specific phase, which is going to help you a lot when we think about project management, because the more we can detail the phase, we can assign responsibilities, we can track, we can change, we can have better results for our project. So that's it for this video. I'm going to explain all the knowledge areas in the next video. Right after this one, you're going to learn what is integration, scope, time, cost, quality, all the 10 knowledge areas we have in the PMBOK guide. So stay tuned, check out the other videos and also leave your comments if you have any questions, any doubts, let me know in the comments area and I'll answer in our next video.